For only to a magician is the world forever fluid, infinitely mutable and eternally new. Only he knows the secret of change. Only he knows truly that all things are crouched in eagerness to become something else. And it is from this universal tension that he draws his power. These words of wisdom come from The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. Writers are magicians who know that all things are crouched in eagerness to become something else. The key to great storytelling is change, meaningful change. Readers want to look at the beginning and ending of a story and see that something has happened. If at the start a farm boy discovers he's a prince, it might feel pointless if by the end he returns to his ordinary life with all the same beliefs and relationships. A more intriguing narrative arc could show him deciding to take the crown, marry his childhood sweetheart, and fend off assassination attempts before abdicating the throne. His worldview might morph from blissful ignorance to world-weary cynicism. A journey has taken place, one that provides insight into our own lives. When you ask people what moments transformed them, the answers are similar. Receiving that sought-after diploma, falling in love, cradling a newborn, mourning the death of a loved one. Life's most transformative moments are when our definition of normal changes, rewriting the routine. Satisfying narratives often focus on those moments of change where we learn the most about the characters. Change need not be dramatic or lasting for the story to be meaningful. It can be barely noticeable, even temporary. It's the moment a bully reaches down to pet a dog when no one's looking, or when winter passes into spring. In her book Steering the Craft, speculative author Ursula K. Le Guin explains that change does not always mean conflict. Modernist manuals of writing often conflate story with conflict. Conflict is one kind of behavior. There are others equally important in any human life such as relating, finding, losing, bearing, discovering, parting, changing. Change is the universal aspect of all these sources of story. Story is something moving, something happening, something or somebody changing. The most impactful novels feature change at every level, from the larger character and plot arc to the smaller scene and sentence construction. Let's look at an example of each level of change, character, plot, scene, and sentence, and see how you can apply those ideas to your own stories to elevate their power for your readers. Characters are how we most deeply connect to stories, identifying with their thoughts, emotions, and experiences. We learn about ourselves through observing others and the way their lives play out, whether in real life or in fiction. A character's internal change can involve new beliefs, attitudes, or goals, which can be positive, negative, or neutral. Change can also entail a shift in their relationship with or understanding of other characters. Gabrielle Zevin's bestseller, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, traces the lives of Sam and Sadie and their shared obsession with video games. Naturally, the passing of decades creates change for both characters. They improve as game designers, storytellers, and business owners in creating their company, Unfair Games. Sam struggles with his health and his unrequited love for Sadie while Sadie enters and exits other romantic relationships and fights to make a name for herself independently of Sam. Sam and Sadie's relationship as friends and business partners oscillates across the novel. They start as close companions when they're young, but have a falling out. By chance, they meet again in college and create their first game together. They butt heads over business decisions. But both of them attempt to bridge the gap and reforge their friendship. Their feelings toward each other are what shift the most across the course of the novel, speaking to the complexities of how a relationship can fall apart and reform over and over and over again. Sam's thoughts when he reunites with Sadie in the first chapter foreshadow that changing relationship. Sam looked at Sadie and he thought, this is what time travel is. It's looking at a person and seeing them in the present and the past concurrently. And that mode of transport only worked with those one had known a significant time. Not all characters change. These types of flat arc protagonists might instead be the ones provoking change in secondary characters, or the world changes around them even as they don't. The lazy, pompous Ignatius J. Riley from A Confederacy of Dunces doesn't grow much from beginning to end, which is kind of the point of this comedic novel. 
However, Ignatius shreds his mother's last nerve, and by the end, she decides to marry and have her son committed to an asylum, showing that she has experienced an internal shift as a result of his behavior. Stories often take place at the greatest point of change in a character's life. Otherwise, there wouldn't be much of a story. This is why it's vital to see characters make choices. Their decisions reveal something to us about our own lives and understanding of human nature. In a plot-level transformation, the story's external circumstances shift. The character or world end up in a different place than where they started. In the young adult dystopian novel The Giver by Lois Lowry, 11 turned 12 year old Jonas experiences a dramatic upheaval both internally and externally. In this world, people are assigned specific careers and spouses, with a limit of two children. This conformity is meant to eliminate conflict, and their society further prevents suffering by suppressing everyone's emotions and memories, even pain and colors. The exception is the receiver of memory, who keeps the mental records of humanity's suffering and joy in all the color that once existed. I'm going to talk about the book's ending, so skip ahead one minute if you want to avoid spoilers. The final scene of The Giver shows Jonas escaping his community, along with a baby who was going to be euthanized. Jonas rides a sled into a town outside the oppressive boundaries of the world he's known, and toward new freedom. The runners of the sled slice through the snow, and the wind whipped at his face as they sped in a straight line through an incision that seemed to lead to the final destination, the place that he had always felt was waiting, the elsewhere that held their future and their past. This external change in physical location underscores the internal metamorphosis Jonas has experienced in becoming disillusioned about his colorless, pain-free society. Across a novel, the reader often travels on an adventure with the protagonist. The character might return to a place they were in the beginning, but their experience feels different. It's a funny thing coming home. Nothing changes. Eric Roth writes in the screenplay of The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Everything looks the same, feels the same, even smells the same. You realized what's changed is you. The Giver opens with Jonas feeling frightened by an unidentified aircraft from outside the community, but at the end, he's excited to head toward the world beyond. The opening and ending echo each other, but so much has changed between those two points. Stories would be boring if every scene and chapter had the same emotional tenor. If the author is constantly pulling on the audience's heartstrings with tragedy after tragedy, it can feel like trauma porn, losing its impact. A book that constantly presents scenes where the character is just going about their day without any challenges can taste stale because nothing is happening, nothing is changing. One way to combat sameness is to flip the mood from the beginning to end of a scene or chapter. Maybe a chapter starts happy, but ends sad, or the protagonist achieves their goal, but there's an added complication. Lord of the Flies by William Golding shows how a group of young boys marooned on an island slowly descend into brutality. Toward the middle of the novel, Ralph, the main character, looks out to sea in despair, thinking, But here, faced by the brute obtuseness of the ocean, the miles of division, one was clamped down, one was helpless, one was condemned. That moment is followed by a short interaction with one of the other boys, Simon, who interrupts Ralph's thoughts, repeatedly telling Ralph, You'll get back alright, giving him hope. The scene ends with the two boys smiling at each other. Not every scene or chapter needs change, but it's a good rule of thumb when you're feeling stuck or the story is losing momentum. If there's a lot of doom and gloom, give your protagonist a surprising win. If things have been looking up and the character is full of hope, throw in a moment of despair. Sometimes the point of a scene is to show frustration at a lack of progress. However, when you have a string of scenes that don't move the story forward, the pacing might feel too slow. Fast pacing involves how quickly things change, and how frequently the character takes steps to pursue their goals or otherwise alter their situation. One of Kurt Vonnegut's rules of writing is every sentence must do one of two things. Reveal character or advance the action. Change on a sentence level entails introducing new information or building on what you've already established. There's freshness in content and form, in diction and syntax. 
White Teeth by Zadie Smith opens with a suicide attempt, a darkly comical one. After opening with two scenes, the attempt and the thwarting of the attempt, the narrator explains why the character would do something so drastic. Archie Jones attempted suicide because his wife, Ophelia, a violet-eyed Italian with a faint mustache, had recently divorced him. But he had not spent New Year's morning gagging on the tube of a vacuum cleaner because he loved her. It was rather because he had lived with her for so long and had not loved her. Archie's marriage felt like buying a pair of shoes, taking them home, and finding they don't fit. For the sake of appearances, he put up with them. And then, all of a sudden, and after 30 years, the shoes picked themselves up and walked out of the house. She left. 30 years. Let's go line by line here. First, we're presented with a statement about the reason for his suicide attempt. The second sentence presents a turn, going against readers' potential expectations and saying that it wasn't sadness at losing her love. Building on that second sentence, the third reveals it's actually the opposite, and he didn't love her. Then we're presented with a simile about how his marriage feels like owning a pair of shoes that don't fit. The gut punch at the end of the paragraph is that she left suddenly after 30 years. We see the change in syntax throughout, with those final two sentences composed of two words each, contrasting with the longer ones that came before. Notice that the tone of the writing is largely consistent. It's tragicomic, highlighting colorful details, like the wife's faint mustache, the vacuum cleaner, and his wife walking off like a pair of shoes. The other elements of the prose, the content, the sentence structure, are modified to provide novelty from sentence to sentence. By contrast, if all the sentences feel like they're running in place, we lose a lot of that forward momentum. Here's me badly rewriting Zadie Smith. Archie Jones attempted suicide because his wife had recently divorced him. He didn't love her. He had been with her for 30 years. He had spent New Year's morning attempting suicide with a vacuum cleaner because he had lived with her for so long and hadn't loved her. His marriage was a shoe that didn't fit. The prose feels choppy because it's repetitive in both content and sentence structure. Rather than teasing out the details, the paragraph gives us all the information up front. It jumps between ideas instead of easing into the transitions, and a lot of the poeticism and voice is lost in those redundancies. Changing up your prose on a line-by-line -line basis ensures your readers hang on to your every word. Think about one of your stories or a story you admire. At each level, plot, character, scene, and sentence, identify a place where there's significant change. What makes that change interesting? Are there places that feel less interesting that could be enlivened by some form of change? Countless other elements contribute to great storytelling, but without change, a story might not yield meaning, and humans are meaning-seeking creatures. Change makes us think, gives us a puzzle to solve. We need change in stories because our lives are forever evolving. We can never exist in stasis. Stories speak to us when they reflect our own lived experience in some way when they capture the inevitable ebb and flow of time. We age, relationships start and end, the world reshapes itself, and we must face everything anew. It comes back to the purpose of fiction. Mary Cole captures the idea beautifully in her book Writing Irresistible Kidlet. Creators make art in order to give context to life and understand it better. Audiences consume art in order to see new perspectives, heal, learn, mourn, and celebrate. Humans use art to experience new things. We use art to feel better when we need to see the light at the end of a long tunnel. We use art to get back in touch with our humanity. We use art to refill our own creative reservoirs. What do you think is the key to great storytelling? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Whatever you do, keep writing.